here is an easy to follow video where you will learn to make a sling pouch for your cell phone. In fact, why don't you make one with me for practice? To begin with, you will need one piece of fabric that is 9 inches by 13 inches, three pieces of fabric of the same size, at least three inches bigger than your cell phone. One of these can be a coordinated printed fabric, a button for decoration, a one inch piece of Velcro as a fastener and a long ribbon for the sling. Take the three equal pieces of fabric and align them one on top of the other with the printed fabric in between two solid pieces. Make sure the right sides of the printed fabric and the top solid fabric are facing together. As you can see in the video, secure the right side of the fabric with all the layers together using beaded pins. Now move the fabric to the machine. Set stitch pattern selector knob at A and set the stitch length between 2 and 3. Place the pin side of the fabric, aligning it with the edge of the presser foot. Lower the presser foot and start sewing. Remember to remove the pins as you sew along. When you reach the other end, press the reverse stitch selector. To reverse, few stitches, release it and continue to reach the end. Raise the presser foot and remove the fabric. Cut the thread with the thread cutter. You have now stitched along the right side of the fabric. Now open the pieces to have both solid and printed pieces side by side. Lay it flat. Trim the excess threads on either side. Now place the stitched pieces on the large piece of fabric with the right sides facing each other. Match to align the straight edges. Pin along the side to hold the pieces together. Now stitch along the pin side. Remember to align the fabric to the presser foot. Lock the stitch with the reverse stitch selector. Continue straight down to the opposite end of the fabric. Lock the stitch at the bottom end too. Raise the presser foot. Remove the fabric. Cut the thread with the thread cutter. Open the sewn piece and flip it over. Then make a lengthwise fold. Match to align the edges perfectly. Now set the fabric lengthwise under the foot. Use the reverse button to lock the stitches and continue sewing along the open side. Pause your machine as you reach before the joint. Align the joint seams and turn the allowance on either side. Continue sewing. When you reach the corner curve, follow the shape. Sew slowly along the curve. Raise the presser foot to pivot the fabric if needed. Continue to sew along the next side carefully along the curve till you reach the start point. Lock the stitch at the end by lowering the reverse stitch selector. Raise the presser foot, remove the fabric and trim off all excess threads. Now you have three sides stitched and one side open. To give a neat curve to the flap, notch the seam allowance along the curve at regular distances. Make sure not to cut through the stitch line. Now turn the fabric inside out carefully from the open side and make sure the curves are shaped right. If not, use a pin to gently tug around the seams to fine-tune the shape.
increase the piece to make the seams flat. Once you have the right shape, fold the top open side and fold the raw edges inside the fabric by half an inch. Align the folded sides together and set the fold under the presser foot. Sew the fold along the edge. Lift the foot to remove the material and trim the excess threads. Now place the sewn piece flat with the wrong side up. Take a piece of velcro and separate the two sides. Take the rough piece and place it at the center of the curved side, leaving half an inch distance from the top. Sew the velcro in place by sewing all the sides along the edge. The box stitch will give added strength while opening. While going around corners, keep the needle down. Lift up the presser foot to pivot the fabric. Do this on all corners. Secure the stitch using the reverse stitch selector. Once done, lift up the presser foot, remove the fabric and trim all the excess threads. Now fold the bottom side of the fabric so that the sewn edge reaches the flap seam. Fold over the flap to mark the position on the fabric underneath. Use a water-soluble marker to mark the edge. Now take the opposite side of the velcro and place it on the mark. Open the fold and take the fabric to the sewing machine. Sew this piece of velcro with a stitch along the edge. Remove the fabric and trim off all the excess threads from either sides. Keep the piece with the wrong side up. Fold over the fabric so that the top side meets the seam line. Now all that is left is to sew the open sides and attach the sling. You can either use a ribbon for a quick and easy job or make your own strap from the leftover fabric. Take one end of the ribbon and insert it between the top side edges. Place the edge aligned to the presser foot. Lower the presser foot. Start sewing along the edge. Secure the stitch with a reverse stitch. Stay close to the edge while sewing. Continue sewing till the end. When you reach the end, lock the stitch with a reverse stitch. Take the ribbon and remove the twists. Insert the other end of the ribbon to the opposite open side of the piece. Repeat what you did for this side too and sew along the side with the edge stitch. Make sure you match the edges nicely. Once you reach the end, take a reverse stitch. Stop the machine and lift the presser foot to remove the fabric. Pull the threads and cut off all the excess threads. Your basic pouch is now ready. However, if you want to hide the stitch lines on the flap where you attach the velcro, you can easily hide this with the decorative flower or a beautiful button from your local haberdashery and place it over the stitch. Put a small dot of fabric glue and attach the embellishment to the fabric. Apply a little pressure and leave for a few hours. There, your mobile pouch is now ready to be flaunted. You can experiment with different colors, fabrics and embellishments. The method will remain the same. When it's done, strap it on and share it with all of us.